Hello and welcome to the 62nd, 67th episode of the Sock Bunny Knit and Fit video podcast. My name is Kimberly, also known as Sock Bunny, and today is Tuesday, December 25th, 2012. It's Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas if you celebrate. I am recording from sunny Florida in the United States of America, and um, i like to say th- uh, welcome and thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you're a new viewer, uh, this is going to be a pretty relaxed episode, so I hope that I don't scare you away because today I am in my pajamas and I don't have any makeup on. So you get the very relaxed uh, Christmas Day version of Sock Bunny. I am Sock Bunny pretty much everywhere on the internet, on um, Plurk, Ravelry, Instagram, um, Google+, Twitter, iTunes, YouTube, and Blip.tv. And the blog is at sockbunnyknitandfit.blogspot.com. The email address is sockbunnyknitandfit at gmail.com. And the um, Etsy shop is at sockbunnystudios.etsy.com. The uh, Etsy shop is currently closed because I am leaving tomorrow to go to Rhode Island. Uh, My older daughter is 20, and she goes to college in Rhode Island. So my younger daughter, Rachel, who is 18, and I are driving up leaving tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. We are leaving Joe here to take care of Bandit. And um, we uh, are leaving tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, and we'll be in Rhode Island uh, sometime Friday. I don't know what time. (laughs) And we'll be there uh, through January 3rd. We'll leave on January 3rd and then get back on January 5th. So the shop, the Etsy shop, will reopen on January 6th, which is a Sunday. Um, I do want to draw, uh, I mean, I already drew the winners for the thousand member prize giveaway. So I want to announce the winners. I did go ahead and send them a private, uh, well, I ear burned them on Plurk, on Ravelry. <laughs> and, um, so, uh, I expect to hear back from them, but, uh, when I do hear back from me, your pr- prizes will not go back will not be mailed until I get back because I there's just no way today. I still have to finish packing. Um, Rachel and I are watching the Doctor Who marathon today. So during the commercials, I am packing and all that fun kind of stuff. So I'm almost done, though. Uh, so the winners of the 1,000-member prize giveaway, we had four prizes. The first one won their very own John John. And if you are a new viewer, John John is my stuffed bunny whose birthday is today, and uh, he's 37 today, and um, he did not want to come in here because he and Rachel are lying in the recliner, covered up in blankets, watching Doctor Who, so he's out there, but anyway, I drew the winner from, I drew from number 2 to 63, and I picked number 62, who is Angel Mom 3, who is Sandy, and she said that John John would be safe from ceiling fans and he would travel with her. So, yay. <laughs> so, um, Sandy, get a hold of me. Let me know your address, and I will mail you your John John. Okay, the next prize was this beautiful purple sparkly yarn from Kramer Yarns, and it is um, wool, silk, and sterling silver. And the winner of this one um, needed to tell me what their knitting goals were. I drew from two to number 183 and picked number 57, who is artist maybe, who is Mary. And she said, purple and sparkle, pick me, pick me, please. I did. And uh, she says, as I'm going, as I am doing the crazy knit along, January will be okay, let me try that again. As I'm doing the crazy knit along, January will be knit all the things on my needles. This will include the Even Star cast on New Year's Eve. Beyond that, to knit one item for charity each month is something I would like to accomplish instead of waiting until the end of the year and scrambling to get them done. That's very wise. So, um, Mary, get a hold of me. Let me know your address, and this will go out when I get back from Rhode Island. And then next we have the Roasted Carrots. This is by Slackford Studios. And this, uh, for to win this one, you had to tell me what is your favorite vegetable. I drew from numbers 2 to 176. I picked number 150, who is Serenity, S-E-R-E-N-I-T-T-Y, who is Lori from Florida. Yay, Florida! And she says, 
I love the sharp tang and earthiness of parsnips, especially cooked and mashed with potatoes. I have never had parsnips. I need to remedy that. <laughs> And then lastly, oh, yes, get a hold of me, blah, 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 you know the deal. Okay. Um, and then lastly, the jitterbug yarn, which is in the Jamboree colorway. colorway this is calling it jitterbug. And this was, what is your favorite co crazy color combination? I drew from number two to number 170 and picked number 63, who is Jess Dodd, who is Jessie. She is one of the co-hosts of the multi podcast, and I love that podcast. You totally need to go over and watch that one. And uh, Libby is her uh, other podcasting host, and they are two wacky girls. They podcast at the same time. They're in two different lo locations, and uh, they have their webcam set up. I just think that's really cool. Um, so she says, I think your tangerine tree colorway is the wackiest I've seen that I love. But if I have to make one up, maybe a coral with purple. That's pretty wacky. So get a hold of me. You know the deal. Blah, blah, blah. So congratulations to all the winners. We will have more uh, prize drawings when we get to 2,000 members. Um... So, uh, by the way, these people have 30 days to get a hold of me. If I don't hear from them, then I will uh, draw new winners, but I'm sure that I'll hear from everybody. Okay, so what are today's topics? Charity, fitness, fi finished objects, works in progress, knit and crochet alongs, stash enhancement, tips and tricks, favorite things, and what I am watching and reading. So, first we're going to talk about charity. I was um, approached by Sandy, Angel Mom 2. Um, wait, or is it Angel Mom 3? I think it's Angel Mom 3. I think I just typed that wrong. Um, she happened to be the winner of the John John, which is just a funny coincidence. Anyway, she contacted me regarding Halos, the Halos of Hope group on Ravelry. And she says, um, this is a charity for Valerie Funds Camp Happy Times. Halos of, Halos of Hope wants to help provide 200 to 300 kids ages 5 to 21, hats that are warm, festive, and fun. Because they have the 2013 theme from the directors and organizers early, giving them all lots of lead time to make another great year and hopefully meet or exceed their previous year's contributions of over 300 theme and 300 regular hats. Um, did I say that right? <laughs> uh, I think I need some coffee. Anyway, um, Oh, because they have the theme early, they expect they have plenty of time to meet their goal. That's what they're trying to say. So the theme this year is stars. So if this is something that interests you, if you would like to make some hats that could be themed or not themed, uh, go over to the Halos of Hope group on Ravelry. And um, I'm going to mention this again for the next few weeks just to give everybody uh, a chance to check it out. I think that's a great idea. Um, so, fitness. We have our fitness along going in December. Um, if any day that you work out at least 30 consecutive minutes, you can post your workout in the thread um, in the Sock Bunny Knit and Fit podcast group. And the winner is going to, well, I'll draw the winner the first week in, um, well, actually, I'll draw the winner, I'll draw the winner the first week in January, but I don't know um, if that will be after I get back or not. I'll draw it early January. <laughs> it just depends on how good of an internet connection I have up there. I am taking my laptop with me, but I don't know what kind of internet connection I'm going to have all that fun stuff. So we'll play that by ear. But anyway, the winner is going to get either a $5 giftable pattern on Ravelry or some bare sock yarn or fiber that I will dye for them in up to three colors of their choice. Or the option now is they can also just pick some sock yarn or fiber out of the, um, the, uh, shop. Seriously, I need to have some caffeine. It is 2.18 in the afternoon. Um, uh, oh, and we are having a new, I don't know if you want to call it a contest, but you are going to be able to win a prize. I don't know what the prize is going to be yet, but in January, I would like to see you create a fitness uh, goal poster. I showed mine last week or the week before, and so this is your chance to make your own poster. It could be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be, but I want it, you to be able to post it where you can see it and remind you of your goals and be able to track your goals. So um, 
It needs to be specific. It can't just be like run more, eat healthy. No, it needs to be something that you can track because track, uh, trackable goals are um, uh, more likely to be um, something you'll keep on top of because you don't, if it's vague, it's not really a goal. It's a dream. <laughs> Words of wisdom, right? <laughs> so anyway, so I want to see some um, trackable goals. And um, so post a picture of it. You have through the end of January to do this. And then I will draw a winner. So if it's something that you are out there and you want to donate a prize to, definitely let me know. Um, okay. The moment we have been waiting for for almost two months. Finished objects. Sarah's sweater. Yes, I finished the sweater. The buttons are done. All the ends are woven in. It is gorgeous. I love it. It is the best thing I've ever knit in all my five years of knitting. <laughs> so without further ado, I introduce you to Sarah's sweater. It is the Dania sweater. If you're a new viewer, my older daughter, like I said, goes to school in Rhode Island and she asked me to knit a sweater for her. So here it is. You can see it has asymmetrically colored sleeves. I didn't bring the pattern in to show you, but um, it also has buttons. So let me button up some of those so you can see. I forgot to bring in my button band swatch. But basically it's just a button. Um, it's just a button band in a very shortened version. But um, I am a little... And I'm going to ask Sarah her opinion, her opinion on this, how often she's going to be buttoning it up. Because uh, the buttons, the but, it's sort of stretchy. And I think I need to reinforce it, which I know the Knit More Girls have a um, video on how to, well, I think it's a video. I know they have a tutorial on how to, oh my gosh, I just buttoned it wrong. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Um... They have a tutorial on how to um, make your button band stronger by uh, sewing in a ribbon behind it. So I'm going to see if that's something Sarah wants me to do. If she does, then I will do that um, and I will make these uh, button bands. This button band a little bit sturdier. If she's not really ever going to button it, I'm not going to go to the trouble of doing that. But I think it looks better unbuttoned when I tried it on and took pictures, I thought it looked better unbuttoned or maybe just with the top couple of buttons. Yeah, I did it right this time. Okay. <laughs> okay. There we go. Yay. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh my gosh. It is a masterpiece. There are very few, maybe, I think I maybe made only one mistake while I was making this. It was something where I had like a little hole where I had maybe done an extra yarn over or something in the back and I had to like stitch it shut. Um, but other than that, I think it's pretty perfect. And I am very, very, very happy with this. I would definitely knit this pattern again. Oh, and I have to say thank you to Dawn from Wolf Farms because um, the way the pat pattern was written, when you separated for the arms, you bound off a bunch of stitches and then later you um, cast on a bunch of stitches. So you had this gap under the arm and it had to be grafted. And it said to use the Kitchener stitch. But I was like, I can't do the Kitchener stitch because because I've only ever done the Kitchener really, I think, when I've done the toe of socks. And those have been live stitches on the needles. And I was like, this is just a bunch of stitches in a circle that have already been cast off. How am I... I had no idea. So I called Dawn from Wolf Farms and, well, I texted her and asked her if I could call her. And I called her and I was like, how in the world? And I was like talking out loud and I said, you know, I can't Kitchener stitches. She's like, why can't you? Why don't you just pick up the stitches and knit it? And I was like, oh my gosh, I never would have thought of that on my own. Ah! So thank you, Dawn, for saving my sanity that day. And, um, so I did my very first buttonhole project. I'm very proud of it. And my first top-down sweater. So this was a huge accomplishment. I'm very proud of it. I can't wait. I'm going to be seeing her on Friday. I will get lots of pictures and hopefully some video of her wearing the sweater. So, oh my gosh. I would definitely knit this again. And, um, of course, I would use 
different color because gray, no. And um, lime green, yes. <laughs> I totally would knit this in lime green. And uh, the pattern was very well written. Um, and I plan on contacting the lady who wrote the pattern and, and telling her how much I like it. So so there we go. Sarah's sweater. Let me put it somewhere where I don't forget it. Because if I leave here without that sweater, I will cry. Okay. So that's my one finished object. Let's get into uh, works in progress. I do have... Um, a sort of finished object. I finished one of my mitts. Um, I am doing a knit along with um, Tina from Knitting Blooms. Uh, this knit along ends on the 31st, six days. I don't know if the second one's going to get done. I really want it to, um, but we'll see. Maybe if I make myself work on it today, I should actually. Okay. Uh, anyway, I turned it into a fingerless mitt, and basically what I did is um, just put some ribbing at the top. And I ribbed the thumb. I'm not crazy how... See, here I ribbed, like, a few rows of green and then a few rows of pink. And I should have done that on the thumb. So I might do that on the second thumb and um, see if I like it better and then fix this. But what are the chances of that? I have a deadline. Hmm. <laughs> and the second one may just look like this, too. But it actually looks, you know, pretty cute when it's on. Um, I have a feeling that Sarah might try to steal these from me while I'm up there if I do finish them. That's the goal. If Sarah wants them, Sarah can have them, because Sarah gets what Sarah wants. That's what I always say. Um, anyway, so I haven't woven in the ends, but here's the palm, and then here's the back. And I really love them. Um, this is some yarn that I dyed in my sunshine base, which is my sparkly base. You can't really tell. It's sparkly. Not in this light, you can't. But anyway, I'm really, really happy. I like the pattern. Very easy to follow, easy to read. Um, and I like how it fits. Um, after, because it was a little bit tight, but after I took it off and put it on a few times, it must have stretched it out. So I'm sure that I can block these to stretch them out. But yay, I'm very, very happy. So like I said, the second one has to be done by the 31st. I guess this will be my knitting for the rest of the day while I'm between packing and watching Doctor Who. Well, while Doctor, watching Doctor Who. So, um, and then this pattern is by Valerie Woodworth, and she has a lot of different um, color work um, uh, mittens, and I believe she has a color work shawl pattern too that's really cute. So, and let's see, what else do I have? Oh, my sock yarn blanket. I haven't shown it in ages. I am doing from sack. <laughs> Sock scraps, um, sock leftovers. I am doing a gigantic granny square, and I'm crocheting it. So let's see what's going to be the best way to show it to you. It's just a gigantic granny square. And I think I've done five or six rows since you've seen it last. So I'll show it to you up close so you can see what it looks like. Just a big, giant, never-ending granny square. And, oh, I found another almost finished object. I'll show you that in a second. And then um, I have this much yarn. I've just taken various sock yarns and woven them into a big, giant, I wound them into a big, giant ball. When this ball is done, this blanket is done. So that's how it goes. Because it's sort of a lap blanket type of thing anyway. So I'm very happy with how it's turning out. And I want to start another scrap blanket knit. Well, maybe. I do want to start another scrap blanket. I haven't quite decided. I might do the mitered square one. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but I will not let myself start it until this one's finished. So I got about five rows done since the last time you saw that. And I totally forgot that I crocheted a little blanket for Paprika, Rachel's doll. And this is probably some of the... Where did I put my extra... I thought I brought them in here, but maybe not. This is some of the yuckiest, yet most beautiful yarn in the world. <laughs> this is Red Heart Super Saver. So it is like knitting with cardboard. It's very stiff. Um, you could scrub dishes with this thing. <laughs> um, you might notice that the bottom half looks a little bit different than the top half, especially if you look at the turquoise, because I actually ran out about here and had to go buy more. 
and I got it at Walmart and they had it marked down. I bought two more balls because I love this yarn. <laughs> I don't care how stiff or crappy or whatever this yarn is. This particular colorway, I think it's called Bikini. I wish I had a dozen balls of this because I would make a gigantic crochet afghan. That might just have to be a... I think after I finish my um, scrap crochet, my uh, sampler that I haven't worked on in weeks, um, I think I might cast on. I might get like a dozen balls of this and cast on because I love this. I know. I know. Seriously. There's no accounting for taste. <laughs> so I made this for Rachel's doll. She her doll is a little pep, uh, a little um, cabbage patch doll. I haven't woven in the ends, and she's got a little doggy, and so this fits across both of them. So that's another almost finished object that I forgot to list. Okay, next is <sighs> oh my Johnny Appleseed socks. Um, I am having a knit along with Diane Denise. <laughs> Denise from the Knitting Den, and we are having a variegated sock yarn sock knit along, and um, it's running until the end of January. You must have cast on December 1st or after, and it has to be done by January 31st. And I am using my um, Manly Base in the Johnny Appleseed colorway, which is sort of almost a Christmassy color. The pattern is the Waffle Rib 2 from Sensational Knitted Socks, the book. Love that sock book. And last time you saw these, I had just finished um, picking up the gusset stitches and had started the gusset decreases, and I'm about maybe halfway down the foot. So these will be my uh, knitting in the car since I don't know if I'm going to want to work on the mittens, the color work mittens in the car. I'm trying to do color work and watch a 18 year old drive. Probably not a good idea. Probably need to focus a little bit more. This is gonna, She's going to do at least half the driving. Rachel is and she's 18 and she has never, um, she hasn't really done a lot of interstate driving. So this is going to be a big life lesson for her. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's it. Oh, um, for the um, oh for the knit along the John, for the variegated sock knit along. If you want to tag your projects, it's uh, K D for knitting den, S B for sock bunny, and socks. So K D S B socks. And then our upcoming knit-alongs and crochet-alongs that we're having. In January, I am going to be taking place, uh, taking part in the Sparkle Free for All in January with Lauren from the Lemnit Crochet Designs podcast. It could be any pattern and any sparkly yarn. So it could be uh, any, any yarn. It could be hand spun. I actually have some sparkly hand spun that I'm going to take with me that I haven't decided what I'm going to make with yet. Um, so you're going to cast that on January 1st or after, and the deadline is January 31st for that. And then for the sci-fi knit-along in February, that's going to be a co-knit-along with Sam from the Knit Run Dig podcast. And it could be any sci-fi um, pattern or yarn colorway. So like maybe you have a Star Trek yarn colorway or something like that, so you can do that. Just uh, when you post your finished object, uh, tell us... Uh, how it relates to sci-fi because it might have, might be something I haven't heard of or something like that. Um, an example of something that you could do is Knit Picks has a uh, colorway of sock yarn and called I think it's called Time Traveler and that is a Doctor Who reference. So that is something that if you wanted to knit socks in February with that, that would work. So that's just an example of something you could do. Um, I had mentioned last week that I think I'm going to knit a Dalek. And that's a Doctor Who reference. Um, stash Enhancement. Uh, from last week, I didn't... All right, what, oh, here it is. I had, didn't have a chance to print it last week, so I printed it so I could show you today. I had received from Lisa Marie, who is the Yarn Goes On. She bought me a pattern called the um, Ocean City Chalette. And this is a sort of long uh, crescent shaped chalette. It looks like it's a pretty simple knit. So thank you very much Lisa Marie for that. 
And then this week, um, Sarah from the Apple Blossom and You podcast uh, bought me the pattern for good, which you've probably heard about. It's a hat pattern. And that was um, written by Megan from the Stockin' It Zombies podcast. And you've probably heard about this a thousand times on other podcasts. And then lastly, um, Photo Kitty, who is Kelly. Um, I don't know if she still has a podcast, but I know she used to have the podcast Purple Photo Kitty. Um, she sent me her own design, which is the Entwined Hearts. It's a bottom-up crescent-shaped shawlette in three sizes. That looks really pretty. It's sort of hard to tell because I... Didn't print a very good copy of it. I printed on draft, but see, that looks like two hearts joined together. So that's why it's called Entwined Hearts. So thank you, Kelly, very much for that. That's really, really pretty. And also, I wanted to mention that I had quite a surprise this week, and I forgot to bring it in. But um, I was at Joanne's. I don't remember what day it was. I think it was like last Friday. And I had um, purchased a knitting calendar. It's one of those calendars that, er like, has a pit a pattern every few days and I was like okay I was, and I was sitting in the car waiting for Rachel to get out of work and I was flipping through the calendar and I was like hey that hat looks really familiar and I looked at the designer and it was Sarah from the Apple Blossom and You podcast and so I texted her and I'm like oh my gosh I just saw I how did you have a pattern in this printed calendar that I got at Joanne's, and she's like, oh, yeah, like, it's no big deal, you know. And then I uh, flipped a few more, and she had a uh, shawl pattern in there, too. So, yay, congratulations, Sarah. They, I'll try to remember. In fact, I better make a note. And I don't think I have a pencil near me. Um, I need to remember to bring that and show you guys next time. Yeah. If I don't remember, remind me. How about that? Okay. So, congratulations, Sarah, for being published. That's awesome. And she said that she her uh, sweater pattern was in there last year, and she won $500, $500 in their design contest. That's pretty impressive. Okay. Um, tips and tricks. My tip and trick this week is, is regarding the holidays. If you had stress this year getting ready for the holidays, then... And I'm pointing at myself, too, not just you guys. I'm, this is towards me. Why did, was I stressed out? Did I not know that Christmas was on December 25th every year, the same day? Did I not know this was coming? So why didn't I prepare better? So my goal this year is I'm going to do a uh, post-holiday debriefing with myself, and I'm going to make a list of all the things that I wish I would have started earlier, like Christmas cards, um buying stocking stuffers, things like that, that I wish I would have started earlier. And I'm going to start them. And I used to do this, and I got out of the habit. I'm going to start in August and September. And I'm actually going to put notes on my calendar to start doing those things so that I am not doing it in December next year. So, Because um, usually throughout the year, I buy the stocking stuffers, and I keep them in a box. And this year, I waited until the last minute. And it's just, to me, I'd rather buy things as, that I see as I like them, that I know the person's going to like, instead of buying stuff just to buy them stuff. So, uh, that is my little tip. No matter what your holiday, if you're stressing about it, start earlier. You know it's coming. Or are we in denial? <laughs> um, okay, favorite things. This is one of my favorite things that makes me want to scream, squeal like a pig, as Dawn would say. Um... You, want, you probably already know, because I've talked about it recently, I love the Muppets. Love the Muppets. I grew up watching the Muppet Show. So, for Christmas, Rachel got me a surprise that I did not even ask for, and I didn't know it was coming. She got me <gasps> Muppet Treasure Island, one of the best Muppet movies ever. If you have not seen this movie, you need to see this movie. It is fabulous. Fabulous. It has um, Tim Curry in it who is a fantastic actor. It's got um, song and dance numbers. It's got great comedy. Fantastic movie. You have to see this movie. That's all I have to say. 
If you even remotely like the Muppets, you have to see this movie. Even if you're not a huge Muppet fan, this movie is adorable. Of course, it's a it's a uh, pirate theme, um, so it's just fantastic. It says on the back, "Ahoy, matey! Get ready for hilarity on the high seas with Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, and all the Muppets in this exciting action adventure inspired by Robert Louis Stevenson's classic pirate tale." When young Jim Hawkins inherits a long-lost treasure map, he hires the great ship Hispaniola to seek his fortune, with the good Captain Smollett, who is played by Kermit the Frog, at the helm, and the greedy Long John Silver, played by Tim Curry, at the heart of a dastardly plot, they set sail for adventure, only discover danger at every turn. It is amazing! Yay! Okay, so I cannot wait to watch this. If Doctor Who wasn't on today, I'd be watching it today. So, But I know there's no way Rachel's going to let me change the channel. Okay. Uh, what I am watching and reading, I am still working my way through Star Trek The Next Generation. Season 2, almost done. Ready to start Season 3 soon. I'm still working my way through the book The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. And, like I said, today is a Doctor Who marathon with the Christmas special being on tonight at 9 o'clock. And then um, the guy who currently plays Doctor Who, Matt Smith, is going to be on the Graham Norton show following that. And then immediately following that, I'm going to bed because I have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning because we are going to be leaving at 6 a.m. Crazy. And we will be driving to North Carolina and staying with one of Rachel's former classmates. And then we will be dry the next day driving to Maryland. And picking up one of Sarah, uh, Rachel's former classmates and st spending the night there. Friday we'll be in Rhode Island. Like I said, I'll be staying with my friend Michelle. We'll be there through January 3rd. I don't know exactly what we have going on. I know it's going to be um, a little bit of touristy stuff. I know there's a mill up there that I want to go visit, but I don't know if they're currently open. I don't know if they close for the holidays. There's also a place... Um, called um, La Salette. It's a shrine, and they evidently have a very nice um, Christmas light display, so we'll probably be going there. I would really like to be able to go visit um, in Massachusetts the Shrine to the Divine Mercy, because um, St. Faustina is my patron saint, and if that's great to you, that's okay. <laughs> um... Other than that, I think we're just going to hang around, maybe do a little bit of shopping, um, a lot of knitting, hopefully. I do plan on podcasting while I'm up there, so maybe I can get Sarah or maybe my friend Michelle or somebody to appear with me, but don't hold your breath. So I guess that's it. I hope you are having wonderful holidays, whichever ones you celebrate, and I hope you have a happy new year. I will see you hopefully next Wednesday on New Year's. So um, in the meantime, keep on crafting. Bye.